Morning, everybody, and welcome to those of you at home who are joining us. Um, we are going into that mad holiday season, as we know, so there's a number of people out in goodness knows where else in the country. So, for those of us that are here, we're going to start praising God together and we're going to start with all creation Christ to you.
23 verses. <coughs> Psalm 134. This is praise the Lord. I think we've been doing that already, so that's good. We're going to keep that going. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands. Just lift your hands up just for a moment. Just lift your hands up. This is just reaching out to your Lord. It's not just lifting your hands up. We can all do that. This is actually saying, Lord, I want to come into your presence right now. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Come and bless us in Swindon. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. God's power wants to come and touch us this morning. And uh, I pray that as we continue to praise God, we will feel something in our spirits, whether we've known God for many, many years, or whether it's a new experience or whatever's going on in our lives, that God will connect with us. We're very small in number today. That's because a lot of people are away on holiday and different things. And um, But God is still here. Isn't that good? He's with us. He understands us. He knows everything that's going on in our lives. We can lay it all before him. And just say, Lord, come and touch us. Come and give us something new this morning. Yes. And um, yesterday, um, my daughter, our daughter, Debbie <laughs> you know, had, had a big role playing it. And um, she, they, she lived with her husband in Claire Philly, and Ollie is one next two weeks gone. Two weeks gone. Can't believe it, that year's gone. And um, she said, she knew we were going to go and see Deb's mum, as you know, hasn't been very well recently. And um, she said, can I come along? to drive to Swindon and then come with us to Luton, which is a three and a half hour journey for her, and come with us to surprise her nan. And so yesterday, after a bit of a delay on the motorway and different things, we got there, and she just walked in with the baby to surprise her nan. And that was such a wonderful moment. And, uh, and I pray that God will bring some surprises to you this morning, yeah? Yes. For God wants to do some work in you and touch you and surprise you. It may be something very small, it may be something amazing, it may set you free, it may give you a smile, it may bring some rejoicing in your heart. But God says, I want to surprise you this morning. We get some very nasty surprises at night. This is going to be a good surprise, okay? We want a good surprise. Are you with me? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> so come on, everybody, stand up. Let's just, Lord, just come and bless us, come and touch us. Thank you for all those who are here this morning. And Lord, I just pray that we will get something new from you. Surprise us, but Lord, I pray that we will just praise you to worship you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that you love us with a passion, that you never give up on us, even though it looks like it sometimes. And I pray, Lord, that you've got a great purpose for us all, and I pray, Lord, that you will come closer to you today than we've ever been before. So, Lord, thank you that we're all on the journey. We're at different stages in the journey. But, Lord, I thank you that you love us and that you want to come and stir our hearts this morning to a closer walk with you. So, Lord, come and surprise us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, David.
trust and obey. I will walk by faith and not by sight. That's a declaration there. I will walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, what I can't see, it doesn't matter because my faith and my connection with my God says I'm okay. My faith is holding me where I need to be. No matter what comes against us, no matter what we can't see, no matter how many things we think are coming against us, I want us to open our eyes this morning. Right? So whatever we've got coming against us, in fact, you close your eyes for a minute. Think of all those things you think are coming against you. Now I want you to look out slightly further. And a little bit further. And a little bit further. And I want you to see the millions and millions and millions of angels that are there fighting on your behalf. Because this is their battle. We just happen to be in the middle of the battle. But God is bigger and God is greater. And whatever comes against us, we will be victorious. Amen? That's what we need to hold on to this week. No matter what's going on, we walk by faith and not by sight. And that is why we can say we are children of God. We're going to sing that song, I am a friend of God. And I want us to really sing that because God lavishes us with his love. He calls us his children. And what father gives his child something that is evil and awful and that will destroy us? No. God allows things to happen, but he walks through those journeys with us. So let's stand and sing, I am a friend of God.
here this morning can share a testimony of any victory in your life, anything that God's been doing in your life, maybe a very small thing, it may be something amazing that's happened. Anybody? Sheena, come and join me at the front. Just take your seats for a moment, everybody else. If you can turn the mic on, please, Alan. Thank you very much indeed. It's mainly what God has said to me in these last couple of days, and I shared it with Tara earlier in that, but um, the Lord brought it to my attention in the Bible where it says that the robe of his train filled the temple. And I looked it up, and it said that the robe of his train in the year of you know, Isaiah and in those days when they went out to battle, when they won a battle, they would cut the robe of the king off you know, what he was wearing, and he would put it to his own robe so that his robe would grow and grow. And the Lord brought it to my attention of how his robe is growing all the time. It's growing. You know, it fills, it, it says in the Bible, you know, his robe fills the temple and that his robe is growing. And, and he just brought it to my mind that the earth is his footstool. And that, you know, the earth is his footstool, so that this robe that is growing, and the robe represents the glory of God, it's growing so much that it's coming down to the earth, and it's beginning to cover the earth. You know, and I just found that so exciting, that we have battles, but the Lord is, we've been singing about it, you know, he's, he's the victor, and, and you know, we're, we're coheres with him, and that, and that, that glory, that glory, that we are part of his glory. You know, I just find it's amazing. So I just wanted to share that this morning. Thank you, Shana. Anybody else? Anybody else? Something that God's been doing in your life. Maybe just this week. Maria's coming up. She'll be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're getting feedback in front. Hello, um, you probably all know that I have great problems with sleep, so I don't always make it. But I've been praying to the Lord that He will change that, and um, so that I can save my friend. And um, here I am. And, um, Hang on, Maria, one minute. Sorry. Right. And oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Just keep your mind up. Okay. And so here I am for the second Sunday running. Um, I'm a little bit blurry eyed, but the Holy Spirit has really woken me up. And um, I pray that this service blesses everybody else in the same way. Which is whatever needs you have, just ask, because He answers prayer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I'll do it from here because I don't need that. Um, so I just want to give thanks to God. Um, you all prayed over me um, ages ago for this in latest injection and nothing happened. And yet, within the last three weeks, I have reduced from about 80-90% pain down to about 30-40% pain. Now I can live with that and I know God can do the rest. When I see the consultant this week, I will be saying to him, I don't want any more intervention at this point. And if God chooses to heal me for the rest, that's fine. If not, the door's still open to go back to the you know, consultant. But you all know how difficult it's been for me to even walk. Now, admittedly, carrying Ollie yesterday, who weighs nearly two stone, my hip was going, please somebody take him off of me, it's really hard. But actually, I drove in Canada... I drove all the way back from Luton yesterday without my wedge that I have to sit on and I wasn't in agony last night when I got into bed. Now people, the cynics, would say, oh, well, you had an injection. But who provided the injection? The NHS, but God provided that for me right the way through. So I am standing in the gap where I'm going, okay, Lord, tentatively, I'm saying I'm literally almost healed until the next time <laughs> but i give thanks to god because for the first time in four years i actually feel that i am not in pain Ooh. in the same way so praise god for that <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 
I'm I'm always grateful when Pastor said share because um, God is so good and um, so it comes with many blessings one by one and there's so much things if you just stop and think to say thank you Lord thank you Lord you have been so so good um, in the last two weeks um, my two grandchildren have their birthday and you know just another year so, Today is the Amara's birthday, and she's six, and we are celebrating as a family. Last week was Naya's birthday, so everything there's, and today's my brother's birthday as well, so there's a lot of things just to celebrate. But over the last three years, um, most of you will remember that um, I gave up my job, and two, two things I wanted to achieve when I gave up my job was to spend more time with my grandchildren, and also to complete my degree. And today I can stand and say, I can take both of them <laughs> But to be A with honors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We believe it. So, uh, <laughs> so yes, and, and you know, I couldn't do that without the power and the help and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Honestly, church family, he's interested in every aspect yeah. of our life. Amen. You know, sometimes I've got assignments and I just have to say, Lord, help, yeah. help, help, help. And the Holy Spirit said, get on with it. And he guides me, you know, teach me, show me where to go, encourage me to speak with my tutor. Because at times as mothers, as wives, we, we, we are so crowded with doing and serving others. And, um, but he's interested in us as women and, and, and as mothers to, to go out and use the skills yeah. that he has given us. Yeah. And um, he see the desires of our hearts, ladies. He know yeah. what we want and he has an empower us. And, um, to, to I've, I've, I've come to this country, I've never finished, I've always wanted to, to, to graduate, I've always wanted a degree, and um, and the ripe old age of 50 <laughs> to go back to university, it provided, it provided financially so I could give up my job and concentrate and retraining, and that is just favor yeah. from God. Amen. And I've got so much to say thank you, thank you Lord, and, um, and thank you when we can stand up and come to a blessing. Just yeah. take a moment and say, this is what God has done for me. Yes. And um, there's so many people. I remember Maria, I talked to you a couple years ago when I was doing my research, and thank you, can you help me on the journey? A lot of people have helped me on the journey with my research. And um, and if you want to do it, no matter what age you want, get on with it and do it. And okay. like everything, everything that I am today is just to glorify God. Thank Hallelujah. you. Joining. Yeah, just amazing that no matter what age we are, if we've got a passion, it can happen. Can't it? And, um, and so be encouraged that um, you can never say never, can you? And uh, what age did you say you were? <laughs> and, um, but I think it's just amazing. <laughs> it's amazing no matter what age we are, does it? And, um, you know, you, if you've got a drive in you, you've got a passion in you, you can do it, you know. And, um, and um, God will bless you along the way as well. So, um, Thank you. Anybody else? One more. Is there one more? Go on, Nicole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I guess mine is less of like a an answer and like a specific miracle, but more of like a thank to God in the waiting. Um, so I think. The best way to wear it is I struggle with loneliness quite often. I think most people do, quite a lot of people do. And um, I'm also struggling for me, like with, you know, like godly people, like, like as a young adult, so I would like to be, to be surrounded by, um, to be encouraged by, to you know, like rely upon. And as I was speaking, I took on about it and praying, and it was just really, really weighing heavy on my heart. He brought me two scriptures, the first being. Isaiah 53, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. And then 2 Peter 3 9 was, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. And that just reminded me that, yes, he hasn't brought anyone specifically to me right now, and yes, he hasn't like covered me like with people, and I don't have people necessarily to turn to at my age, but he is there, and he knew exactly what I needed in that moment, and he brought me exactly where I am. So it's just a lesson like a thank you God for blessing me with a huge friend group 
but more of a thank you to like you knew what I needed and you met me in the waiting and you were faithful right here. Amen. So his encouragement is faithful in the waiting. amazing isn't it and um, God's doing things in our lives sometimes they're big things sometimes they're smaller things sometimes we don't even know that God doing things but when we look back we think wow God is doing things in our lives so thank you for sharing this morning one more song Peter thank you please stand with me. Sing mighty to save, everyone needs compassion. Transforming lives and 
touching people. And as we continue in our summer season, you know, it doesn't really feel like it this morning. But we've had a bit of <laughs> bit of sun along the way, haven't we? And um, but I want to challenge you towards the um, sort of the next quarter, which is sort of September to the end of the year. I don't want to rush summer away, but I want us to get our minds focused for what's coming from September rather than just focusing on the summer period, but to focus our minds during the summer in a more of a relaxed attitude that we can be in and think about maybe some of the programs that are going to restart or maybe some new initiatives in the church because there's plans and different things going on behind the scenes that we want to see. Because I'm fed up with COVID. Are you fed up with COVID? Yeah. I'm fed up with the last two and a half years as that's going to cause chaos in our world and particularly in our churches. And I want to see new things happening and not be bothered bogged down by the COVID stuff and say, let's start carry on doing new things and carry on with where we were maybe two or three years ago now. And, um, and to have a new purpose, maybe a new vigour and a new energy within us throughout the rest of this year, rather than just focusing on all the negative that's hitting our screens and news at the moment. And um, I want us to be a church moving forward, fruitfully, spiritually fruitful, yes? And not just worry about what's happened, but to say, whatever's happening, let's get on and do church again, yeah, in the way that we used to do it. And, um, but I want to ask a question this morning, and I need a roving mic person, Cara. Thank you for offering the volunteering, that's brilliant of you. So, um, so if you can turn the mic back on again, Alan, please. Yes, that's a planning And it's all ready to go. If you see a hand raised, I'll do it. Okay. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you a question before you go off walking. Okay. But I want to ask you a question this morning. Okay. And the question is, what does an unstoppable <coughs> Christian mean? What does an unstoppable Christian mean? Okay. So let's see those hands. What does it mean for us, Rupert? There he is. Go for it. Thank you. What does it mean to be an unstoppable Christian? Not held back by circumstances. Very, very good. Thank you, Ruth. Inspired. It's a good start. Anybody else? See those hands shoot up. Come on. We'll be coming back to Ruth again. Let anyway. me <laughs> <laughs> sneaking. Okay, the hands on the move. That's good. It means no matter what happens to you, you have faith and that will see you through. Brilliant. Yes. Fabulous. Thank you. What a couple of crackers so far. Anybody else? Come on, ladies. It's all the move. At the back. At the back. I see a hand at the back. Oh, God. <laughs> um, it's like a Christian that isn't like, is, their faith isn't uh, made weaker by like persecution or being judged and they still stay firm in God. Brilliant. That's That's good. Thank you very much Open indeed. Them. Other hands are shooting up. Okay, we've got over there and then the, the young man in front. Yeah, who keeps loving God, trusting God? Fulfilling the divine mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Adelaide. Brilliant. Thank you. And the Hawaiian oh, person then. No matter what, you believe in the word. No matter what, you trust it, you move it, you're still sticking with it. You've got a perseverance. Brilliant. You believe in his promise. You believe. You believe the word. You're moving on. You're growing. You want to be in church. You want to help. You want to share. You feel happy and joyful, and you love the Lord and his people. Brilliant. And you will continue no matter what. Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you very much. My little friend over there as well, Clara. Thank you. Uh, like, he, like he protects you from everything, and you don't let anything stop you. Amen. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Well done. Anybody else? Gina? Um, it's someone that's got a vision of heaven and they know where they're going. Oh, that's, that's some great ones. Anybody else? Debbie? <laughs> For me, it's all of that, but it's also, even if you don't feel equipped to do something and you know God's told you to do it, you do it anyway because yeah. God will equip you along the way. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Anybody else? Or is that everybody else? <laughs> anybody yeah. else? One more, come on, one more, we want one more, Heidi. Come on, one more. <laughs> we want one more. Shola, come on. You know me what to say. Shola's going to say something. I know she is. And she won't stop either when she gets going. 
It's standing from even in the face of persecution. When you're called upon to defend your faith, regardless of the situation, you're able to say, yes, I'm a Christian. Fabulous. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Give it up for Carl as well. Thank you very much. Uh, great, isn't it? But, but think about that when you get home as well. But I'm going to challenge you a little bit this morning. And um, some great answers there. And they're brilliant. Yeah. And um, nobody was planned. No one knew that was coming. And um, what does it mean to be an unstoppable Christian? We've touched on a lot of it. But to, we're not going to be stopped, incapable of being stopped. Yeah? yeah? It means that nothing will stop you in the cause <laughs> of Christ. Relentless, unbeatable. You won't give up. You're persistent, you're determined, you're driven, you're purpose-driven, impossible to stop or prevent, you won't accept failure, always ready for a greater challenge, and you're constantly motivated. Yeah? There's a lot of things there, isn't there? Yeah. An unstoppable Christian, or unstoppable in anything, but in this terms, obviously, as a Christian. Unstoppable doesn't mean that you're going to be at church every week, you can't. It doesn't mean that you're going to be involved in every meeting, because health issues, work commitments... Family priorities often stop that. It doesn't mean you've got to be at everything because you're unstoppable. It just means that you have a mindset that says, with my little friend at the front here helping me, <laughs> my faith will dictate my life. How are you doing, isn't it? <laughs> just thinking of that. You know, we were with our little grandson yesterday, he's one year, and for the first 10 months, he doesn't do anything. The last or yesterday, he doesn't stop moving. <laughs> you forget when you get older just how quick these little things move. <laughs> Honestly, and um, I'm just so glad we can give them back. <laughs> because I'm exhausted when you're with them for about three hours or something, and then um, I'm thinking, goodness me, but we need to be on the go as well, like these little babies, like these little yeah. things here moving around very quickly. We need to be on the go for God as well, yeah? yeah. That's what it means to be an unstoppable Christian. I'm not going to accept failure. Because failure helps us to become stronger. It makes exactly. us focus on things. Exactly. It's not always a negative just because you failed at something. Yeah. It means my faith will dictate my life. I will live my faith determined that nothing will stop me living for God, loving God, and serving Him in my life and in my church. It means I will live my life passionately in giving my all to God. Yeah? An unstoppable Christian. Most things in life are stoppable. Got one here for John. Okay, John, do you remember 2004? What happened? Oh, Arsenal. Right? He knows. <laughs> he knows. I'm not an Arsenal fan, but John is an Arsenal fan. And um, they were known as the Invincibles, wasn't it? And still are. The only team to do what? To go through the season unbeaten. To go through the season unbeaten. Graham, Graham loves that. Graham's a Tottenham fan, so um, <laughs> the, and I used to live in Tottenham, so the rivalry um, is south, immense. South. <laughs> <laughs> but the invincible team of 2004, they went through the whole season without being beaten. But do you know what, John? Do you know what happened after that? They got beaten, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah. yeah, because they're not invincible anymore, are they, Graham? <laughs> because. They were unstoppable, and then that came to an end, didn't it? And then um, the great athletes, Mo Farah, Seb Coe, do you remember Seb Coe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oldies. Um, and every legend will either fade or die at some point. Every successful business will eventually struggle. Every Ofsted outstanding school won't always be outstanding. It takes a couple of new unruly students to come in, and it just throws <laughs> everything out, doesn't it? It doesn't always, aren't always going to be outstanding. But what about us as Christians? Are we going to be unstoppable? What does it mean to be unstop unstoppable for God? Are we stoppable? Unstoppable? What would happen to us individually, okay, and to this church if we truly embraced our mission to be fully devoted and servant-hearted, unstoppable followers of Jesus Christ? What would happen to us? Amazing things would happen inside us, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'll fire us up. We'll be excited. We'll be passionate about things. And, and then things happen in the church. Yeah. People will be drawn to us. Things God will be doing greater things in our community. Because he starts in here. He starts in our hearts. Yeah. And just imagine the effect he can have in a world that is so crazy at the moment. Great things can continue. You can't stop the unstoppable. 
we would become an unstoppable force if we got our act together. And from September, I want to see us get our act together again. You know, a lot of people missing today, it's obvious it's that time of it's that crazy time, isn't it? When people go on holiday, how dare they? <laughs> you know, and, um, but then they come back, and, um, and eventually, sometime during September, October, November, we come back as a church, and we get going again. And, but I want us to kickstart September early on, and we've got new things happening, with new ideas, different thoughts, and not always doing the same old, same old. No. You know, I'm fed up with doing the same old, same old, and seeing nothing as a result. I want us to do new things, and see some greater things happening. Are you up for that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. You can't stop the unstoppable. And I want to encourage you all with the unstoppable to be unstoppable in your faith by listening to this list. Jesus' resurrection was unstoppable. Mm. Even when he died, he rose again. Yeah? Incredible. <laughs> Nothing could stop his resurrection. The disciples, his followers, for three years were unstoppable in their mission. And then after Jesus' ascension, when he went back to be with his Lord or with his Father, they carried on their great work. Because they were unstoppable. Peter, in the Bible, was unstoppable in his preaching. Philip the evangelist was unstoppable in his evangelism. Yeah, great characters. John the Baptist was unstoppable in his crusade to baptise people. He went on and on until he had, you know, difficulties later on in life. But in his mission, he kept on going. A difficult time, but he kept on going. Here are a few more. What about Apostle Paul? He was unstoppable in his ministry. Just imagine all the floggings that he had, the snake bites, being stoned, shipwrecked and being imprisoned could not stop Paul sharing the love of Christ yeah. to those he met. Incredible man. Nothing would stop him in pursuit of serving Jesus. Then we had Gideon. Wow, well, he was an unstoppable force in his desire to please God. His fight against the Israelites, or his fight to save the Israelites against the Midianites, even when God reduced the army to 300, started off with about 30,000 people, and God said, get it down to about 300 and I'll be happy. And then he has to go and fight a group of soldiers of 120,000. And he said, how is 300 going to deal with 120,000? But God brought victory to Gideon because yeah. he was a servant heart and because he served God. He then became, and then he went on and did greater things, didn't he, for, for God. What about David in the Bible? A man that was unstoppable in serving God. Even when Saul tried to kill him, on many, many occasions, he kept on going and then eventually became king of Israel. And then we have Mary, don't we? An unstoppable in her calling to be the mother of Jesus. Her young age, she's only about 12, the disgusted community to know that she was pregnant, the daunting prospect in giving birth to Jesus, the messed up stable, the difficult surroundings, isolated and ostracised, yet Mary never stopped serving God. Unstoppable. And then we have Jesus. He was unstoppable. The devil, the tomb, the soldiers, the Pharisees, Judas's betrayal and Peter's denial could not stop Jesus. Even Jesus' death could not stop Jesus because he rose again and is alive with us today. Amen. And we can be unstoppable. Have you thought about that? Remember, the only one that can stop you being unstoppable is you. You're the only one that can stop you from doing greater and bigger things. You're the only one that can stop anything happening and serving God and his purpose in your life. The devil can't stop you. He will hinder you. He will trip you up and he will cause havoc in this thing. But he can't stop you. Only you can stop you. Your friends and family can't stop you. If you're going to be unstoppable, it's up to you. To be unstoppable is to walk in my godly purpose every day of my life. That's a challenge, isn't it? But as I said to you recently, Christianity is a lifestyle. It takes over your life. You don't wake up in the morning and think, I'm not going to be a Christian today. It just flows throughout your life. Everything you do is based on, the, on Jesus and on God and what he expects of us. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Okay, it's only one verse. Okay, it's going towards the end of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then we get to Acts. Acts chapter 1, and verse 8. This is Jesus speaking. 
Just as he's about to be taken up back into heaven, the ascension, Jesus says this to his disciples. And he says to them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, God's power comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and Swindon and Wiltshire and to the ends of the earth. Amen? Amen. He says, I will give you power, I will give you, I will equip you, I will empower you to go and do amazing things. So when Jesus left, he left us his spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that we can do incredible things here. If he didn't, then we would have been in trouble. <coughs> and Jesus needed to leave because when Jesus was on the earth, it was only him. And so it was impossible for him to meet everybody all at the same time when he was travelling around Jerusalem. So he knew he had to leave because then he was going to leave his power so that when I'm speaking here in Swindon and someone's speaking now in Australia, the same power is connecting us all because God's power is with us. Yeah? yeah? But Jesus couldn't be in Australia and with me at the same time in person. So he said, I'll leave you my spirit because my spirit can be with you everywhere at all at the same time. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. The same power back 2,000 years ago when <laughs> Jesus died on the cross is here right with us today. And that excites me and I trust it excites you. Because we have his power, it means that we can be unstoppable if we've got a passion to be unstoppable. If you haven't, it won't work. But if he says, Lord, I want to do greater, bigger things for you, I want to serve you, even in the smallest things, whether it's cleaning the loose or whether it's preaching up the front, I say, Lord, I want to be used by you. And then we become unstoppable. Unstoppable power. Jesus left the disciples to become unstoppable disciples. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, amazing things happen. And we've seen that in our church, we've seen it in our own lives, haven't we? And these, well, and this group of men, choosing this unstoppable gift, they said, yes, we want it. Transform these men, these disciples, into an unstoppable force for Jesus Christ. Amen? They said, I'm going to, we're going to carry on your great work, Jesus. We're going to do amazing things, which is the book of Acts is all about, about the acts of the apostles, the disciples, and what they got up to. And as they went from village to village, town to town, they became astute, empowered risk-takers as they travelled ministering in the name of Jesus. Amen? These became bold, hum, uh, bold people, humble people, wise people. They suddenly went from being argumentative, irritable disciples who used to moan a lot and complain about a lot of things. That's not men, is it? And, um, and they used to just get all uptight about everything. They became empowered to serve God. They became an unstoppable force. Even death threats, yes, this is the disciples, imprisonment, beatings and persecution didn't stop them from serving their Lord. It's too easy today to just give up, isn't it? What about us today? Just think about yourself for a moment. Just think about the world in which we are living in. Just think about what's happened in the last two and a half years. Just think about parliament, government, and all the stuff that's going on with that at the moment. Just think about the world and where we are at with things. <coughs> I think for so many Christians, the Holy Spirit's been turned off. We need to turn it back on in our lives again. Let the Holy Spirit, the power of God, to come over us. Too many Christians have stopped serving God, worshipping God, and living for Him, because of COVID. I know there's been issues and there's a lot of stuff, but now it's like COVID gives us an excuse to either not come to church or just give up on our faith. Too many have stopped going on with God because of COVID. Too many have stopped following Christ because of the negativity in our world and in their lives. It's easy to give up on God because it's not fair. We don't see the answers. Why is it happening for them? Why is it not happening for me? We don't see God moving and we just give up on him. But actually, God's working behind the scenes. We just don't always see it until we look back and think, wow, God's doing something. Don't give up on God. He hasn't forgotten about you. But there are times for everything. Too many have stopped living for Jesus because he has either said no or not yet or not answered the prayer. And this is the problem. We want our answers now because we are impatient. And God says no because it's through the trials and the difficulties is that way you get to see me work in your life. Yeah. If everything was a bed of roses, we don't need Jesus. We don't need God. And so he says, I'm going to put little obstacles on, and all the way. To trip you up a little bit. <coughs> because I know, this is God speaking, that you need me because you haven't got enough about you to get you through life. And he says, I'm going to make sure that you do turn to me 
And that way is for you to turn to him when we get through our, we go through our difficulties. Because if his life was a bed of roses, we will not be turning to Jesus. But he says, you, I know that you need me. So, are we going to become unstoppable? Too many obstacles get put in our way, don't they? And we easily just get dismayed, depressed, disillusioned, fed up. But Debbie and I, we were in, on safari back in 2013 in South Africa. And uh, we were suddenly stopped in our tracks by two big elephants and a little baby elephant. Do you remember? And suddenly the jeep that we were in with a couple of other people had to just suddenly stop because these elephants were coming towards us. And that's not a good thing or a good place to be in when you've got some angry elephants and everything else. And we had to reverse back and we had to get out of the way. Suddenly things in our life can stop us in our tracks like these elephants. And I think that's a bit like symbol, a symbolism of Christianity. Because sometimes, whether it's big or small things, we just give up. It stops us in our tracks and it just stops us, doesn't it? We can easily get stopped serving God and living for him because of the big or small things that happen in our lives. And God is saying us, as we start into September in a few weeks' time, let's get going again as we mean to go on. Let's become unstoppable as a church in Swindon to see lives transformed, touched, just helped. You know we've been helping with the family support. We want to see that develop more. And helping people with food and the difficulties today. And with the financial, the economic crisis that we're in, we're going to see more and more need. Are we going to step up as a church? What makes an unstoppable Christian? There's ten things here. Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Touched on that one. God's power in us. Christians who are tenacious and courageous. Yeah? Are you tenacious? Are you courageous? I want to see a bit of that. Okay? Christians who are determined and persistent. Yeah? Let me see a bit of that. Christians who have a bigger perspective on life rather than what life gives you. Don't just think what happened in your life is what life is all about. There's a big world out there. Me and Debbie are in Canada. It's a huge place. You know, the world isn't just Swindon or the little place you live in. It's a massive, massive place. And Swindon is a big place. And we want to be reaching more and more people, don't we? Don't look at life through your own eyes. Look at it through God's life, eyes and see a bigger perspective. He's also saying... It's also saying Christians who have a heart for the lost. People without Jesus in their lives. It also says Christians who are hungry after God. Number seven, Christians who are living for God and not just pleasing themselves. Because too often we just want to please ourselves. As long as we're happy, it's fine. Well, when you become a Christian, it's all about pleasing God. It changes completely. It also means an unstoppable Christian having a close relationship with Jesus. Not just once a week on a Sunday or when you can be bothered or when you wake up and you're feeling okay. Regularly, daily, having a close walk with Jesus. It says Christians who are Jesus-led, Christ-led. And Christians, on the ten, who are not dictated by their emotions or temperament. Because that's a big one, isn't it? We are dictated generally by our emotions. If I'm having a good day, I'll ring someone up or whatever, or I'll do this, or I'll bring blessing, or whatever. If I'm having a bad day, it can fall apart, can't it? We need to keep going, irrespective of how we're feeling, and to keep on going for God. What makes us unstoppable is the power of God in our lives. And here are some thoughts to make you, I trust, excited and inspired to be unstoppable. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Now, I read this this week, so hopefully... It will encourage you as it encouraged me. I read the other day, as I said, that Christianity is growing faster than the population rate. Is that a word? Yeah, wow. Yeah. And followers of Jesus Christ outnumber every other faith. Come, let's have a bigger woo than that. No, we need a bigger woo than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Then, we have, then I read a few more. The Christian community in Latin America and Africa accounts to one billion people. Woo! Is that a woo? Wow, that's, a, that's an amazing woo, isn't it? <laughs> then I read it says rapid church growth is occurring in Iran and Middle Eastern yeah. countries. Wow. Wow. Now that is a woo, isn't it? Yeah, that's that is a big woo. We don't get to hear it on the TV. Yeah. We just hear about all the other negative rubbish that we get on our box. Yeah. But great things are happening. 
You don't know about that because I only read that this week. And then Operation World, which is a Christian organization, goes back many, many years, report that the church in Iran, <coughs> Iran, okay, is the fastest growing church in the world. Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not going to hear that on the news. You don't just turn on Sky News or breaking news. Iran has the most churches in all. You don't hear that. You just hear all the other stuff. And then I heard there are an estimated 100 million followers of Jesus Christ in China. Wow. Isn't that a wow? Isn't that a wound? 100 million. This is a country that loves to persecute Christians where the underground church is taking off because they can't worship outside because they will be arrested and killed. You don't hear about that in the news? Yeah. About the persecution in China. It's a shocking place. But here, there's 100 million followers of Christ. Keep going. And then, okay, I will. And then there's another one. The size of the Christian population in Nigeria alone already the largest on the continent, is projected to double in 40 years. No wonder there's so much persecution of Christians in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. Because Jesus is on the move. Yeah. And when Jesus is on the move, the devil ain't going to like it, yeah. and he starts to do things. But you cannot stop Jesus. He's unstoppable. And he may look like it from our perspective. He may look like it when you turn on the news. He may look like when there's not many people in church. And he may look like when Swindon isn't going in the way that we want it to go. But Jesus is on the move. Amen? Amen? Yes. He's unstoppable. If his death can't stop him, he can't be stopped. Yes. He will never be stopped. Are you ready to be part of this in unstoppable force yes. in Swindon from September? Just put all your issues to one side for a moment. Just put everything that's irritating you, struggling with, frustrating you, all the good things, all the bad things, all the negativity, all the rubbish, all the wonderful things. Just throw it all out the side at home and just say, how am I going to be an unstoppable force in September? Because my pastor, Steve, he needs my help. Yeah? Yeah, he does. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Debbie knows. I need help. <laughs> Debbie knows that one as well. I need a lot of help. But I need help with more people doing more in the church. Yeah. Because me and Alan and Debbie, we're struggling, we're struggling at the moment, and we need some extra help. We need people who are good with all their abilities. Whatever you are good at is a gift from God. And we need your gifts. It may be hospitality. It may be that you're a hard grafter doing toilets and cleaning and cooking and things. But we need everything. We need people who can lead groups. We need people who can serve God at the front, at the back. Turning the urns on, making coffee, we don't care what it is, we need more people to serve in this church, yeah? Because it's tiring, and we need more help. And um, But we need unstoppable Christians that are not going to come in and complain and get all whatever. And We need people to come in and say, wait, well, I'm ready to go, let's see what's going to happen. Let's see what God's going to do. If life is tough, we're always going to complain about something. But when you walk through the doors on a Sunday morning, okay, Lord, how are you going to use it? Because I want to make a difference to my next door neighbour. I want to make a difference to the people who live behind me in my, in my street. I want to make a difference to those who are having real difficulties in their lives. I want to make a difference to those who are struggling financially or maybe because they just haven't got enough food or maybe because they've got children and they're struggling with the children. How are you going to become unstoppable? Great challenge, isn't it? Because we want to see this church. I want to see this church open every day of the week. Not just on a Sunday or maybe a bit in the week just to clean the church. But I want people to come in here, keep it open, and serve coffee to anybody that wants to walk in. I'll take your coffee out there and talk to anybody that's walking past. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. It's amazing. We've got one or two little plans for September. Are you up for it? Because Debbie and I can't always be here. Alan's getting old, bless him. And he can't always be around, you know. And, um, and so we need, we need extra help. You know? and, yeah. and it's going to take you lot and those who aren't here who have yet to hear this and will hopefully hear it later on online and then maybe I'll preach this again in September for those who aren't here because I think they need to hear it as much yeah. as you have today stir your heart because God's on the move Amen. and the problem is England is so laid back it's horizontal it's so full of itself it's so I've got everything I need we're so materialistic and so wealthy we don't need God and look what's happening. Yes. 
exactly. utter chaos in our world. We need God, and God's on the move. He won't be stopped, but you will be if you haven't got the right attitude. Are you up for it? Very talented. I trust you are. So will you stand with me? So I'm going to ask Debbie and the team to come back just for a moment, please. Just going to sing a couple of songs. We'll finish a bit earlier today. And um, so we're getting into really the summer mood for all of us. I trust that God will bless you abundantly. This will be the best summer you've ever had. Forget about the sunshine. Just have an incredible, relaxing time. I pray that God will meet your needs, will lavish his goodness over you, that he will transform your life and touch you. And, but I want your mindset just to change a little bit over these next few days. When I come alive is when I serve people and when I minister to people and when I bless people. I trust that happens to you as well. I pray that that is what will happen to you in your mindset and during September and onwards, and not just for the rest of this year, but maybe for the rest of your lives, to serve God in a way that you never thought you could. When you're open to the Holy Spirit, you could be on a mission field in Albania one day, just by saying, Lord, I want to serve you. I know people who are 80 years of age give up their life, and instead of going to retire down on the coast, they said, no, I'm going to go and work for YWAM Youth with a Mission, which is a Christian organisation, and instead of having her lovely home, and I know this lady, instead of having her lovely home by the coast, she said, I'm going to go and live with a number of different people, share a room with another lady, share a bathroom with another lady, at 85 years of age, to serve God on the mission field. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen. We've got our hearts. God can change you, take you to places and do things you never ever thought you had the ability to do. You could be standing up here sharing God's love. You could be giving a testimony of what God's doing. You could be bringing a neighbour to the Lord and just saying, oh, life can be good. It's not always rubbish. Life can be incredible. The Holy Spirit says, I can do all things. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's not about you and your ability. It's about God and his ability. And he says, if you say yes to me, I will work through you. I just love talking to people at the moment. I probably irritate them. But I love talking to people. When we're in Canada, I just talk with people. I said that last week. I'm at Costa this week just talking with people. If you want a coffee and want a chat, talk with me. I'll, I'll talk with you. You know, just moving around, talking, seeing people, talking to our neighbours, finding out a bit more about them and what they're doing. And are you interested to be used by God in a bigger, greater way? Get out there. It all starts in your heart. Only you can stop yourself. So I want us to just move. Raise your hands just for a moment. Let the Spirit of God come over you right now. You may not even know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter. Let's just let God come and touch you. Come and comfort you. Maybe give you a big cuddle this morning. We all need a bit of a cuddle, don't we? A little bit of a comfort, just to hold his hand. Just to say, well, I'm just going to surrender to you. It doesn't mean that life's going to be a wonderful as you walk out of this church. It doesn't work that way. It just means that God will look after us, He will guide us, He will empower us, and life will get better as we go along His way. Ask God to come and meet you in that deepest desire that you have that nobody else knows about, and that nobody else will ever know about. Think about that. Think about how God just wants to bless your family and change them. It starts with you. It starts with you being unstoppable. It starts with the Spirit of God that says, Come on. Come on, Lord, we just want to see you touch our lives. It says on this Monday morning when it's difficult with the boss, we say, Lord, it's all about you. I'm working for you. I work for my boss, but it's about glorifying you. And you may not like your boss, but you do it for the glory of God. And you keep on going through the difficulty because you're doing it for the glory of God. You come to church because it's for the glory of God. I want to use my gifts playing the guitar or the drums or singing or playing the keyboard because I'm doing it for the glory of God. <coughs> Not because I want to raise and promote myself. It's about the glory of God. When we do it for the glory of God, things change rapidly. Praise God. Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit, come over us, motivate us, empower us to become unstoppable. That nothing's going to get in our way, that nothing, no temptation, no difficulties, life will have a hinder us, yes it will. But when I say unstoppable, it means I'm going to have a mindset that says I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going, living for my Lord every day. Serving him, worshipping him, loving him in my mind, in my heart. Yes, life happens, family happens, things happen. I know about kids. They can get things and they can stop us in our tracks. But in our mindset, it doesn't stop. It's the mind that says, I'm going to keep on going. And when difficulties come, I'm not going to give up. When persecution comes, I'm not going to give up. When pain comes, I'm not going to give up. I say, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve you. I haven't been a Christian for 40 something years without any problems in my life. In fact, when you give your life to Jesus, you often get a few more problems. But they're different issues. I don't want to put you off on that. I just want to encourage you to keep on going. We are the privileged people. Those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the privileged people. And I want that to be our message as we go today. Be unstoppable. Let me just leave us in us. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You take.
life today, for a roof over our head, just sustaining us every day, for our family. And we thank you. We thank you that we're still standing, even with such difficulties in the last few years. Lord, we thank you that your, number, your love never leaves us. Thank you that you've never given up on us. Thank you, Lord, that you've never given up on us. Thank you, Lord, that you're coming again. Thank you, Lord, that one day, every day is one day nearer to your return. Lord, keep us eyes on you and not on the world. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for those blessings we have never thanked you for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are our friend. That you care about us. You care about every little issue in our lives. And every big detail. We thank you that you know what's happening tomorrow. We thank you know how our lives are going to pan out. Lord, we thank you that you are in charge of this world. We thank you that you know what's happening in our world. Nothing ever surprises you. We thank you, Lord, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for your death and we thank you for your resurrection. And we thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know what makes Jesus really, really happy? Is when we keep saying thank you to him. And telling him how much we love him. Thank him for the good things. Thank you even when you haven't got it yet. He loves to be thanked in advance. Don't ignore him. Don't get angry with him. Just go with him. And we're all in the same boat together. He frustrates us. God is good, amen? amen. And God will do it his way, in his time. We just got to keep trusting him. So we're going to draw a close. And now just got a couple of announcements. Um, don't forget the offering. If you're able to give on the uh, way out, that'd be great. And the offering baskets. There's a general one, there's a Ukraine one, and there's a missions one as well. So if you're able to give, please give. Um, and all the money goes back into the community, really. So just pray that God will inspire you this morning. And also, um, I said last week that all this is going to be a bit different for our services, okay? So if the weather is good, there won't be any services during August, okay? But what we are going to have is next Sunday, I believe the weather is looking good, we're going to be at Julian and Shells, okay? From 11 o'clock onwards, bring your food, bring your packed lunch, barbecue is available, and Julian and Shell will be there waiting for us. There's details on a piece of paper where they live, and if you want directions, um, please speak to me, Debbie or Alan. And there is um, a postcode on there, or whether that's sat down will work out there. They live out in the middle of nowhere. So, um, but most of you know where they live. But please aim to join us, bring family, bring friends, just a bit of fun in the garden, Sunday, 11 o'clock onwards. The following Sunday, we'll be at Lydia Park, okay? Details again, cost of parking, um, and all that sort of stuff. Bring your lunch with you. We'll be by the coffee shop as we normally are in the barbecue area. Come and join us at the, uh, the week after that, the 21st, we're at Rupert and um, Susie's. They've offered to have us at their house. And um, they've only got a very one bedroom bungalow. But we'll get in, we'll get in. Do the trampoline that bad, it'll be fine. But they've got a lovely garden, a lovely house in um, Upper Stratton. Details are on the piece of paper, so make sure you take one. Bring your own lunch, okay, and they'll... Can you provide coffee? Oh, well. <laughs> Bring a flask, just in case, okay, no, don't get... But, um, and then the following week, we'll be back at Lydia Park, okay. If it's raining, we'll be in here at 11 o'clock, but we'll have a one hour service, and then there'll be food and games in here. As, as in, be, everyone bring their own lunch. Yeah, bring your own lunch. Every time, bring your own lunch. <laughs> Otherwise, you will go hungry. Um, but be, And if we are in the church, it's because it's raining, and we'll have some fun and food and games in here, okay. As well as a short service, okay. You got all that? The main thing is the focus. Next Sunday, we won't be here. We'll be at Gillian and Shell's. And, um, but take a piece of paper with you. So you don't keep texting me what's happening next, and, okay? But if you get, if you need directions for anything or any clarity, just give me a bell or give Debbie a text, okay? Thank you. Are you up with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you want to see God do something different, yeah. invite your friends, invite your family. It's not going to be a service, it's just going to be fun, fellowship and food, okay? And hopefully in the conversations, God will shine through, amen? amen. Because the church is the people and not the building, amen? And where the people of God is, is where God is. And um, so he will be there with us in the park, in the, well, Gillings Park, quite a big garden. So come and be blessed.
Okay. So here we go. Um, our final song, please, Debbie. Well, I was going to do an oldie, but I don't know whether we've got the words. Can you check if we've got, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for loving me? No, we were going to change it, because you wanted thank you, so we were doing thank you. Okay. Yeah, I listen to you. Uh, can I just say, for, for Julian and Cheryl's next week, they would love to see all of us. The barbecue is going to be open, as Steve said. She's got the gazebo up. Bring an extra chair, just in case we might need it. There is parking, so it's not a problem. But bring some extra food to share so we can put it on the table and everybody can help themselves to extra bits. Bring also, if anybody wants to bring any more um, any more cakes and that. Jill's doing her usual strawberries, creams and scones yeah. and a couple of trifles. Um, but bring some drinks with you and everything else because obviously Gillian's got a lot on her plate. But bless her, she's going to host us all. I'm just saying about that. Um, Gillian and Shell obviously haven't been here now for a couple of years because of Shell's ill health. He's deteriorating, he's waiting for an operation, and Gillian is basically his carer. So it's very difficult for them to get out and come to church. So if we can go to them and bless them, if you can come out and do that, that would be incredible. The aim is to be in the garden, and there will be a sort of a, a little marquee type thing. Yeah, the gazebo's up. Yeah. If it's a little bit damp or something. But, um, but please come and just to be there for Cheryl and Gillian, really. You know, they've missed out so much, and um, but they're still in our hearts. And um, come, come and bless them. We haven't got that oldie, so we're going to go to what we had originally. Don't be the glory, please.
one who holds us in the palm of your hand. You care about us so much. Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us today. Father, we receive the grace to stand firm in you, to remain unstoppable in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into this week, we ask for more that your presence to go with us, to guide us, and you help us to live the life you want us to live in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our members that are holiday and ask the Lord that your presence to be with them in the name of Jesus. We pray particularly for the children that Lord, we keep them safe at this time. We help the parents to look after them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we continue in this summer season, we ask, O Lord, that the sun of righteousness will shine upon us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, as we go, Lord, we ask that your presence to go with us, to be with us, to guide us, and keep us in everything we need to do in Jesus' name. Father, remember all those that need one thing or the other, particularly those that need your healing touch. Lord, you're the balm in Gilead, you're the physician there. We ask for your healing upon everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and adoration for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Don't tea and coffee, so don't rush away. And also, don't forget a leaflet with the details on. Cara, could you give me that?